All right, I appreciate everyone taking the time today for our new Zoho CRM UI webinar. Um, we're scheduled here for about an hour today. Uh, we're going to go through some of the new features and functionality in the new CRM UI uh, user interface and uh, also going to take some time for, for questions as well as we go along here. Uh, if you do have any questions, go ahead and post those to the, uh, the chat. Um, it may be something that we have already covered and you want to get some additional clarification on that um, or if it's something that we're going to cover in the future uh, or as we go along through the webinar today, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know. And uh, otherwise, you know, there may be some additional time at the end for some other uh, miscellaneous uh, Zoho-related questions as well. So just keep those coming in the chat. And like I said, we'll stop it a couple of times throughout the webinar today to uh, go ahead and address those. So right now, you should all be seeing my screen here. Um, we're actually looking at the old Zoho CRM UI. Um, in the top right corner here, I have something that says Switch to Zoho CRM 2016. And that's actually something that's going to be enabled in all of your accounts if it's not already, probably over the course of the next week or so. Uh, what Zoho is doing is they're doing that in, in batches, um, you know, groupings of different customers. Uh, they're uh, rolling, slowly rolling out or enabling the new UI for those customers so as not to overburden their servers or things like that or you know have an influx of support calls that type of thing so if you're if you're ready to switch to the new UI and you have switch to Zoho Serum 2016 available to you here in the top right you can go ahead and click on that and it'll take you into the new user interface here within the new user interface uh, we have the home screen here. The home screen is, is revamped here in the new UI. A couple of things you're going to notice. There's a getting started view here, uh, which is a brand new view, um, similar to a view that used to come up when you were a brand new customer in Zoho CRM, but you couldn't really get back to it um, in the old UI. Now it's actually very easy to get back to the getting started area, where you can do things like migrate data, invite additional users, customize aspects of your CRM, create things like web forms, enable sales IQ, which is integration with your website for visitor tracking, also set up your email uh, to work with Zoho CRM as well. Down towards the bottom of this screen, they've also added uh, areas where you can get to free webinars that the Zoho puts on on a regular basis for different aspects of the other components that they have as part of the Zoho suite, uh, demo videos as well, as well as a getting started help area for new users. In addition to the getting started view, you have your traditional customized view. And this is probably what most of you are seeing or something similar when you log into your Zoho CRM. You're looking at probably a customized home screen that has certain components that uh, you've decided are important to you and that you'd like to see here. One of the new things about the customized view is you can actually have uh, a number of additional components here, more so than you could in the past. You can have up to 10 different components, and those components can be uh, single column components like you see at the top here for my events today, or they could be two columns as well where you have it, you know, one taking up half of the screen, the other taking up another half. Now, these aren't exactly taking up half of the screen. That's also a new aspect of the new UI here. You can actually resize certain dashboard components by simply either clicking in the, the right-hand corner here and you can resize, you know, uh, height or width by doing that, or you can also uh, hover over the edges here and, and just click and drag to resize those areas as well. Uh, you can also hover over these as well here, and there's this little uh, sort of dot, dot, dot button here. You can click on that, and you can either edit or delete components, somewhat similar to what you could do before. Um, and you can choose then to go between dashboards or custom views, select the module, select which view it is, also select the component name there uh, as well, which is essentially is the title of that particular item uh, within here. In addition to that, you have the classic view as well. The classic view can't as easily be customized uh, within the home screen here. You have an area where you can select from some different views uh, within the activities uh, module, uh, but you can't really go in and say, OK, I want to see a potentials view or things like that. So it's not as customizable as the, the customized view, where you can really select from any view under any module or any of the dashboard components that you have within the system. 
I'm looking at, a, in particular here, a tasks view. And this is something you're going to see in a number of different areas throughout the new UI. With tasks, you have this sort of flag that's next to them. Uh, anywhere you see that task within Zoho CRM. And what that helps you understand is, is this something that's upcoming in the future? Or is this something that's potentially overdue and in the past? Or is it something that uh, is maybe even due today? So if I look at things like today's tasks, you see here one that has a yellow flag. The other ones that had green flags are something in the future. Yellow flags indicate something that's due today. Or if I look at my overdue tasks here, um, you'll see that all of those are red. Now, in these particular views where you're looking at only overdue or only open or only you know today's items, it's obviously going to be you know it's going to be pretty clear what those items are. But in other times, you're going to be looking at a view of many different tasks, and you're going to see some that are potentially future in the due in the future, some that are due today, and some that are past due. And those flags will help you out quite a bit there. You can also hover over these items here as well, and you can edit them or you can actually mark them as completed as well using the little uh, green circle with the check mark there. So that's a helpful shortcut here as well now without actually going into the full task and, and then going in to edit it. In addition, um, one of the things you're going to notice right when you log in, because it's not necessarily part of your home screen, but just part of the overall view here, You've got a number of items in the bottom left corner here, different control items here, as well as in the bottom right corner. In the bottom left, these are all your chat settings. So you can actually go in here and there's different settings that you can do with the, the chat that's within Zoho CRM. There's notifications as it relates to chat, an unread message, something like that. You can go into your active chats as well and uh, go into one of those and, and actually pull that up there. You can also go into groups of chat here. So you can have potentially groups that are multiple people involved in, 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 a, in a chat communication. Then you have the ability to go in and look at uh, individual people that you have as part of your contacts for chat as well, where you can then see if they're available, they're in green. If they're idle, they're in kind of an, uh, an orangish yellow, or red would indicate that they're actually offline. You can also change your own status here as well by clicking on the drop-down arrow there, selecting either available, busy, invisible, things like that. You can also hit control space, as it indicates at the bottom there, to get into the smart chat. And then one of the nice things you can do here is you can start searching contacts, groups, chats, things like that. So you can search for some keywords or people. So click on somebody and then get right into a chat with them as well. In the bottom right, you have a couple of other items, some notification-related items. Visitors Online ties into Sales IQ. That's the website monitoring where you can actually track visitors coming into your website. And then you can go in and initiate a chat with them or get additional information about them. Maybe it's somebody that you've already chatted with previously and they're in CRM. You'll be able to see some information there. Um, you also have activity reminders here, so this could be you know, relating to an event maybe you have scheduled and, and an alarm pops up uh, an hour ahead of time. You're going to see that under your activity reminders there. You also have your recent items. This actually used to be something that was off to the left here, this little clock looking icon. And that's going to, when you click on that, show you all the recent items you've navigated to within Zoho CRM here. In addition, there's also a feedback area as well. So if you go into the feedback area, you can give Zoho some feedback. You can attach files. You can type a little note in here and then submit that back to them, which then they take that feedback and obviously try to improve um, you know, whatever component is you, you had some feedback on. There's new search capabilities within Zoho CRM now as well. So, I'm going to go in here and just start typing something in, like Turner, for example. You can actually see that it actually brings up a whole list of items here. Um, let me actually just narrow that down just a little bit here. There's a specific contact we've created for the purpose of our demo here. So search ZZ underscore Turner. You can see there's different events that are related potentially to that uh, contact or that lead or whoever company that you might be searching, different tasks associated with them. You can see also the contact here as well. So as you start typing here, it's actually kind of adjusting this list, if you give it a second, to what it is you're typing and then showing you potential items that you may want to go to 
uh, based off of the search that you've done. But I'm just going to go ahead and instead of clicking on one of those individual items that would take me right to it, I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter here and it's going to take me then into the search view. You used to be able to, from the actual little magnifying glass icon that's in the main toolbar up in the top right, be able to change the modules you're searching in. Now, because it gives you those results, you can kind of select from those different sort of subcategories there. Um, the way to change the modules is actually once you've done the search, then you can kind of revise uh, which modules it is that you wanted to be searching within here. So you've searched, maybe you got too many results, and you want to narrow that down to just certain modules, you can do that within here. Like previously, any things that are blue um, are going to be your hyperlinks. Those are going to take you directly to those records. In this case, the account or the contact or the specific task or the event. Uh, one of the other really nice things, though, about the new UI is you can actually change the columns that you're showing here right on the fly. By hovering over the top right corner of one of these modules, you can actually click the arrow there and you can actually select from different fields within here. You can also then take those fields and drag and drop and um, change the order of the way in which those are appearing within here. I'm going to go over to the leads module here, show you a few things within here. So within the, the really any of the different modules, whether I'm in leads or accounts or contacts, really doesn't matter. The things I'm going to show you here are going to apply to all of those. Um, there's a number of new things that you can do within here. So within a view, you've always been able to set criteria and things like that to kind of control which records are, are coming back and sh being shown within that particular view. But you now have additional capabilities to very quickly and easily filter that particular view. So I'm, a, I'm in a leads view for example, right here. And I can go in and say, OK, show me those that don't have any open activities. Show me those that have overdue activities. So if I do something like that and apply that filter, now only the one that has that red overdue activity is showing in my list here. I didn't really change the criteria for the view itself. I'm just simply filtering within the current view. So that can be a really helpful thing to do there. And you can actually do that with multiple items within here all at once, and then apply all of those filters. There's some additional interesting ones that they have up at the top here, like email status, for example. Somebody you sent an email to in the last two days and the status is bounced or something along those lines. Or somebody that I've not sent an email to or somebody that's not opened the email that I sent or not received or the email that I sent, things like that. Uh, or opened the email but hasn't replied to me yet. You have lots of capabilities there as it relates to filtering this based off of email status. Similarly, there's also notes that you can filter based on within these particular areas. So I can say without any notes in the last X number of days or where notes have been added in a certain period of time. You know, some helpful things there. In addition, you have the same capabilities you had previously where you could, uh, there's a little magnifying glass that used to be off to the right-hand side here that you could click on. And then you could filter by some of the columns that were in your view here. But you could only filter by the columns or the fields that you had already shown here. Uh, now you have the ability to filter by any of the fields that are within that module, whether or not you've shown them in here. So if I wanted to see, you know, for example, somebody had opted out, uh, I could go in here and filter by that, even though that's not part of my column set that, that's existing up here now. You simply apply the filters or you can clear the filters as well. So if I clear the filter, now I'm back to my full list of leads within this particular view. So another thing you can do here, too, is you can more easily adjust the columns that are showing. So by clicking this icon here, Add Columns, I can go in and I can actually adjust the columns that are part of my view here just simply by checking off the box to add that field in here. Maybe I want to see the phone number. Maybe I want the phone number up next to email. I can drag and drop, save that, and now I've got that field as part of my view here. You'll see again those flags that we mentioned earlier when we were looking at the task. So in a view like this, I can see, okay, this one's actually due today. I can see that because it's yellow. Uh, I can also see the date, but sometimes the color coding is very helpful. You see this one has overdue. None of these have any future activities or, or tasks that are coming up here. Otherwise, they would have a green uh, flag next to them showing me that. A few other things relating to views. 
Um, in the area in the top left here where you can select from your different views, they've now placed create view within there. So this is where you create a new view. Uh, it used to be that if you hovered over next to the view drop down here, you'd see uh, create, edit, clone, and delete. Um, now the only thing you see there is edit. Well, there's also a refresh as well. Uh, create has been moved to the bottom of the, the drop-down list here. And then the other ones, clone and delete, um, those are actually part of when you go into edit a particular view, that's where you're going to see these. So delete is actually in the top right corner here. So they've kind of moved that to its own little area. It's very separate. You're not going to accidentally click on delete when you meant to click on clone or edit or something like that. So that's up here in the top right. And then the clone is actually down at the bottom here. And cloning will then give it, uh, basically give you a new view that you'll give an, its own separate name, but the rest of the parameters of that view uh, would be the same here. There's also different ways now in which you can uh, modify the columns that are going to be shown within here. Uh, a couple things they've done here. First, these are all alphabetized now. It used to be based on in sort of a way that the way that the fields were added to the module themselves, and it could be kind of tedious to find a particular field. So you've got two options now. You can actually even search for a field if you want to just by simply typing in the field name here. So maybe it's something like state. I want to find that. If I've got a long list of fields, that made that nice and easy to do. Uh, or they're all obviously listed alphabetically now, making that easy too. Uh, you can click on an individual field and just drag and drop that wherever you want that to show up in your set of columns here. Uh, you could just simply click the plus sign next to them, and that would add them to the bottom of the list, and you can drag and drop there. You can also click the minus here to remove that field, or you can even select multiples over here by holding the control button down on your keyboard while you're clicking. You'll see I've got multiple fields there shaded, and then I can click and drag, and I can put multiple fields over here all at once. So some really handy features as it relates to uh, sort of working within these views now and, and making that a lot more a lot more simple and straightforward and just generally easier to use. Go ahead and cancel out of there. I'm going to pull up a particular contact here. Let's do ZZ Turner again here. Now we're going to take a closer look at what the individual modules look like here. But actually, you know what, before I do that, I did see a number of questions coming in relating to views. So I'm going to pause here for just a second, review the chat log there, and see what questions we might have that we can address here. So someone has a question, does this solve the search problem of returning a contact that only has had a note modified. Um, I, I'm not sure of what that specific problem is. If you want to maybe clarify what it is that you're seeing on your end there, I can try to address that. Um, but I, I'm not sure what what that search problem would be. Uh, returning a contact that has only had a note modified. Uh, Zoho does uh, sort of prioritize some of the search results based on. Uh, the date modified on those, uh, or the last activity on those records. Um, that's still the case here in the new UI. Um, so it doesn't necessarily solve that if, that, if that's what you're asking. It, it, it may be. But if you want to clarify that, I can certainly uh, address it if it's something else that, uh, that you might be asking. Uh, do account views have the same task flags? So accounts are not going to have those same task flags next to them. The task flags apply to leads and to contacts. All right. Let me go ahead and I'll, I'll go back into the next uh, thing to look at here, which is actually looking at the specific um, individualized views within the, uh, the, the different modules here. So, one of the brand new things you're going to notice here is that there's really two ways of, of looking at this record. There's an info view, which is the traditional view that you're used to with some updates made to it. Um, but there's also a timeline view now as well. The timeline is actually replaces the latest activity where you'd have to click on a little hyperlink in the top right of the record. Now you can see some history under this record and what's happened with that. So that, that's a sort of a new way of looking at that information here. 
Back to the main info view here, you'll see under next action, this area here on contacts and leads is going to show you upcoming activities or potentially still open activities on them, even if they may, might have been in the past. Um, it's going to show you that on leads and on contacts. And then on accounts, it's actually going to show you uh, op potentials that you're working as well as contacts that are associated with that account that uh, in here in this this sort of toolbar that's in the, uh, the top center area of this record. On the left hand side now you also have this related list section here. A couple of different things. Um, to customize the related list, all these things that are associated with the, the record that you're looking at, you can actually go in here and you can change what related lists are showing and what order and, and things like that. Uh, you can also add additional related lists from here as well. And some of these things are going to be based on your security permissions. Um, so they may not be available to all users, but I do want to point out that those are there if you need them. All of these related lists here are hyperlinks. So if I click on one of these, for example, open activities, I don't have to scroll down to that section within my records any longer. I just simply click on open activities and it takes me right there. The other nice thing is, too, I knew there were open activities before I even scrolled down. It tells me that with these numbers next to each one of these different areas. So I know, before I even go to the open activities on the record, whether or not there are already open activities on this particular record. Additionally, I have the ability here to add new items. So if I clicked on the plus sign next to open activity, I can add a new task, a new event, or a new call. Or I can do something similar under notes, where I just simply click that and it takes me directly to adding a new note. Um, so as you hover over certain ones, there's going to be some that don't have that same capability to create new items. Like you can't create a new closed activity directly from here or an email directly from here. But things like potentials, open activities, notes, that type of stuff. Uh, very easy to create directly from the uh, related list toolbar on the left hand side here. In addition to that, you can also go to the traditional location for those. For example, under open activities here, you see new task, new event, new call, uh, you know, adding an attachment, things like that. Or you, obviously your notes area, you can still do that there. And then if some of them don't have items underneath them already, you're going to see that add new. Uh, directly underneath where those records would normally show up as opposed to in the top right. Uh, speaking of the top right of these different areas here, you also have the ability here to customize the columns that you're showing. So for example, under activities, if I wanted to adjust the columns that I'm showing here, I could go in and do that here, much like I could do uh, directly within the, the search results view uh, that you saw earlier. I can do the same sort of thing within the, uh, act, you know, the, the related lists within these different modules as well. Another thing to show you here that's new is um, there's this little arrow here within a circle that exists as you're scrolling up and down through this record. If you, if you go to the bottom of a record in the old UI, there was a button to take you back up to the top. What's nice about this is it shows up wherever you are within the record. So whether I'm you know, part way down, maybe only a quarter of the way down on the record, or I'm all the way down at the very bottom, the same button exists, and that'll always take me right up to back to the top of the record. Another item that's similar to that is this details area. This used to just be a little ellipses button. It's much more obvious now what that is. Either you want to hide the details there so you can get directly into your related lists, which is a little bit less important now that you have these navigation items over here on the left as well, but it's still helpful. And then obviously you can hit show details to, to show all that information again as well. Also on the left-hand side here, this is where you have your social links, LinkedIn, you can do Facebook, Twitter, Google+, things like that. So you can add those links for the contact or the lead-in as well, very easily here on the left-hand side. And then they've added, they've sort of taken away some of the quick actions and replaced those with some of the things you've already seen. They did leave send email as a button here on the top. So if I click send email, uh, that would open up a new email composition window. I can edit the record from here. And then there's also a lot of things that are directly underneath here as well. You know, your clone, your delete, things like that. One of the brand new features in the new UI is record level sharing. So you can have settings in your Zoho CRM that 
uh, basically allow you to control who sees which records. It could be that you're using territory management, or it could be that you're just saying, okay, if I'm the owner of a record, that record's private to me, I can see it, but other users at my level cannot. But you know, the manager or maybe the business owner or somebody like that that's above me, they can see all of my stuff too. Um, record level sharing allows you to control that. Um, if there's potentially a record maybe that doesn't meet the criteria for, it to, for it to be shared with somebody else. Record level sharing is nice because you can actually go in and you can specify individually and user by user basis um, who else you might want to share this record with and what level of access you want to give them. So you have sort of the automated way of managing access to the records, but if somebody doesn't meet that criteria or maybe there's some exceptions to those rules, record level, level sharing now allows you to uh, sort of break those rules in a way and give people access to the record that might not otherwise have it. All right, I'm going to pause again because I, I saw a couple of other questions come in here. Uh, let's go back here. Actually, there's, there's some clarification to uh, the question that we had previously about the uh, search problem relating to a contact that has uh, had a note modified. So it says, currently if a contact is not modified, it will not be returned as recently modified if only the note within the contact has been modified in a recent activity search. So yeah, so basically the um, adding a, a related item does not count as a modification. It's an activity item within the record, but it does not adjust the date modified. Like if you see modified by here, adding a note or something like that does not adjust that date modified. So I, I don't believe it resolves that problem, but um, to the person who asked that question, it, it may, we may be able to work with you one-on-one -on -one to um, maybe come up with some workarounds or a resolution to that issue that you're seeing um, if you'd like to do that. So contact us offline and, and we can certainly take a closer look at that. All right, I don't see any additional questions at this time. So I'm actually going to go over to the leads module here. I'm going to create a new lead. So I'm going to create a new lead. And right now, I'm on a very, very simplistic, very basic layout, right? There's not a lot of fields here. And one of the brand new features to the new UI that we found very helpful is the ability to have multiple different layouts for the same module. You can have up to five different layouts for the same module. So if this is a lead that's interested in Zoho, I could have a different lead or a different layout, sorry, than, a, than the, lead, the, the layout I might be looking at for a lead that's interested in another product that we offer. Or maybe I have different types of contacts. Maybe I have some vendors. I have some prospects. I have some clients. I could potentially have a different layout in my contacts module for all of those different types of different contacts that I might have. And that way I'm not looking at a vendor record and seeing a whole bunch of fields that maybe only apply to my clients and my prospects. So this allows you to select the different layout here while you're actually creating the, the new record. So I haven't changed to save my changes, no problem, whatever, we're just in a demo here, so that's okay. Now you can see I have a much more full layout here and I've got fields that you know would potentially relate to somebody who is interested in Zoho products as opposed to a more generic lead that I get that we're not maybe sure what they're interested in quite yet. Also from here, if you have the correct permissions, you can go directly into editing the page layout. So for an administrator who's responsible for customizing the system, that's nice too, because you can get directly into that page uh, layout editor, make some quick changes to the layout, maybe add some fields, things like that, very quickly and easily directly from this screen here. Uh, another thing Zoho has done is they started adding auto-suggest. So let me just, oh, there we go. Uh, so for example, in the country field here, I started typing United. It's auto-suggesting different countries here that I, I could potentially choose from. Now you also saw, I think briefly there, um, that I have my auto-suggest or auto-fill things coming up from my Google Chrome, kind of remembered things that I might have typed into forms before. But if you give it a second, it actually comes back with the auto-fill uh, suggestions from Zoho CRM. And that's a nice way of you know, helping ensure consistency of data and things like that as well.
actually take one of these leads here. I'm going to convert that lead. So we'll go in here. We'll convert that lead. Yeah, we'll go ahead and create a new potential. Why not? We'll put a little information in here. Say we're going to try to close this out by the end of the month. Uh, put this in the, one of the first stages there. And say this person is a decision maker with this potential. I'm going to go ahead and convert that. And check out my bottom right corner here. Um, I just basically earned a point towards a badge. And essentially what that is, is there is now a gamification aspect to Zoho CRM. You can set up certain games like, you know, convert X number of leads and you get a badge or you win a trophy or uh, in, enter a certain number of notes in a given period of time, you know, close a certain number of potentials, things like that. And so it creates a little maybe healthy competition amongst your team. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but I did want to point that out while that uh, had popped up in the bottom right corner there. If I go into this particular potential here, there's a couple of new things within potential. Um, one of which is the fact that if you sign up for a brand new Zoho CRM account now, uh, they're actually calling potentials deals in the new account. So I did want to make anybody aware of that that maybe is not an existing Zoho CRM user, but maybe is um, looking to sign up for Zoho. Uh, that's something that's very different in the in the new UI. That those are called deals now, more rather than potentials. Uh, of course, for any of you though that are familiar with so you can also customize modules too. So if you don't like the name deals, you can always change it back to potentials, or we have people call it opportunities. Or for any of those using the using uh, an existing instance of Zoho CRM that might be converting to the new UI, yours is still going to be called potentials. But if you wanted to change it to deals or anything like that, uh, you're certainly capable of doing that. You'll see here under the uh, the stage area here, this is a little bit different as well. Um, when we were looking at uh, contacts and leads, we saw information here about uh, what uh, open tasks and activities we had on those records. When we were looking at accounts, we saw that uh, you had uh, potential information as well as uh, contacts that were associated with that. Here in uh, Potential, you actually see what stage you're in and what progress you've made. You can also change that. So if I say, oh, you know, now we're at the firm project quote stage, I can click that. It takes me right up to that. That's great. It also shows me the contact people that are associated with and what their role is as it pertains to this particular potential. Another new area here as well is under the sales summary. This is unique to potentials or deals. Um, it'll show uh, how long it took to convert the lead, the sales cycle duration based on uh, the estimated closing date there uh, from the time you created the potential till then, the overall sales duration with that is the lead conversion time to the sales cycle duration to give you that. So some really helpful uh, little insight there into some of the, the metrics behind this particular potential or, or deal that you're looking at. Uh, let's jump over to dashboards and reports. So I'm actually going to start with dashboards here. Um, this is a kind of a new look and feel here as well. Um, let me go to this dashboard here that we've created. And one of the nice things uh, about the, the new dashboards is the ability to have a lot of different components here. And you can add additional components right from here. Very easy to have up to 10 components on here, just like you can have on your on your home screen. And you can add additional components, like I said, quite easily from there. You can also edit existing components that are on here. So you can edit that, uh, maybe change the name of it, select a different dashboard, choose a different display type, which you'll see some new ones in here now that didn't exist before, uh, things like that. You can also obviously delete a component, add it directly to your home screen. So if this is something I wanted to see on my home screen, I can click Add to Home. It'll add that directly to my home screen. Next time I log in or I go to home screen or if I just simply click on that here, this dashboard is going to be a part of my home screen now. Something else that's really nice that you can do too is you can embed a URL. So basically what this does, it gives you a permanent URL to this dashboard component. That can be shared on an internal intranet. Uh, it can be you know, posted to like a large screen monitor within the office. Uh, where that periodically refreshes so you get updated statistics and see that sort of thing. You could send somebody an email with that URL and then they'd be able to go directly to that and see that published dashboard. They can even do that from a mobile device as well, which is really handy. 
There's also a new favorites view within here too. Um, so this uh, basically brings up some of your favorite dashboard components, puts those in here so those are nice and easy to get to, easy to find within here. pop over to the new reports view here. A uh, number of new components within here. All of your reports in the past used to be under different folders. Uh, you still have that folder capability, but there's also some other ways of looking at them now. Um, recent reports was an, one of those that existed in the past where it would show any recent reports that you've run. Um, but you can also go into an all reports view, which can be helpful, especially when you want to search for a particular report. Um, that's a nice way of finding a report if you don't remember what folder it might have you might have put that in or anything like that. Um, you can also easily see uh, reports that were created by you, uh, reports that have been shared, um, your scheduled reports, so reports that are scheduled to go out automatically via email, uh, things like that within here. Uh, there's also a recently deleted area for the report, so you can actually go in here, it's like a recycle bin for your reports, where you can, uh, within 30 days of that being deleted, uh, you can go in here and you can restore a report. So a lot of nice things to just help with the ease of use and the navigation here as well uh, within the reports module. I'm going to navigate now over to the uh, setup area. Uh, so for any of you that are potentially you know, administering Zoho CRM within your organization or anything like that, um, this is probably going to apply to you more so than, than the end users, but certainly all helpful information for, for anybody that's on our webinar today. If I go into the setup area here, you now can search this. So for example, if I wanted to, if I couldn't remember where I go to maybe edit somebody's email signature or something like that, I can go in and I can just start typing something like that in. So just type in signature and it tells me, okay, well that's under personal settings. Great. You can click on that. You can go right to it. So that's a handy way of uh, accessing different things within the, uh, within the setup area here. I want to show you guys within the modules area here a couple of new things as well. So even on the old UI, they, they started updating uh, the way you work within the modules and the layout. So some of this may be familiar, but I want to point out a couple of different things. So if I hover over next to um, one of these modules here, I've got a lot of different options here for what I can do with that. Um, but if I go into the layouts, now I can actually see the, the multitude of layouts that we've created within this particular module. Uh, we can assign layouts to different users to control who can see what layouts and things like that. Um, potentially can create new layouts if we want to within here as well, or we can go in and edit our existing one. So maybe I want to go in and edit the standard layout here, very simplistic layout. Uh, I want to go in here and maybe make some changes. What, what, one of the nice new things within here is the custom fields left, and I wanted to point that out. You have certain limitations depending on your, your level of Zoho CRM. Uh, that you might be on, you know, at the free level, you, you're very limited on your customizations. As you move up through that all the way up to CRM Enterprise and CRM Plus, um, some of those limitations are, are increased. And you can go in and you can actually look at the custom field left here and you can see as you're planning for how you're going to design your Zoho CRM, uh, what the limit is and, and how many you have available as well. And that's a really handy feature now that you can utilize within the, uh, the setup and, and the modules customization area. Another thing they allow you to do now, too, is if you're inserting a pick list field, you can go ahead and put in a pick list field here, and I go to add options to this, I can do manual entry, which you've always been able to do, but now I can also select from predefined choices. So I've got things like days of the week, months of the year, time zones, U.S. states, continents, countries, those types of things, and I can use that as a jumping off point, that predefined list for my new pick list moving forward. And I imagine Zoho will continue to add additional predefined choices to this uh, as, they, as they seek to expand this feature here. And I'm just going to cancel these changes. I don't really want to make that. And then a couple of other things within the setup area. Let me go back to the main setup. Uh, within the workflow automation area, there's a, a nice new way of incorporating workflows here. So if I wanted to create a new workflow rule, um, let me go ahead and give this a name like uh, accounts, and let's call this something like owner assignment. We'll go next. And you get a very visual way of looking at the workflows now and a very visual way of building out the workflows. That seems to be much, much easier to follow along um, and to be able to just 
more simply build these workflows. So it gives you a graphical, visual representation of what you're trying to do here. So it, is it walks you through the process here. When do you want to execute this rule? On a record action or on a date time? So something like you know, assigning the appropriate owner to an account, I probably want to base that off of a record action. And, and we're going to say create or edit here for the purposes of what we're doing here today. And then I'll go next, and now it says, OK, we've got the when. Now, which records? Do I want to do it on all records? Do I want to do records matching certain conditions? Things like that. I want to do this one on records matching certain conditions. And what I might say is, let's run this when industry is, and I can go in here and select like computer software, uh, e-commerce, electronics, things like that. And we'll execute this whenever the, the workflow condition is met here, criteria is met, and then it's asking me what I want to do. Okay, so when do I want to do it? Which records do I want to do it for? And then what is it that I want to do? And in this particular case, you know, you have a, a lot of cho choices here, but in this particular case, we're going to do a field update. So I'm going to choose field update. Uh, you can create new updates here. I've already created one for updating the owner to be equal to Drew, so I'm going to choose that associate that, and now we know what action it's going to take. And you can do multiple actions and things like that. You can also do time-based actions uh, if, you're, if you have this being triggered off of a date up here. So there's a lot of different options, and it kind of walks you through the process then as opposed to being a little bit uh, less intuitive in, in the old UI. And then when you're all set and done, you can save this, and it'll, it'll obviously save that workflow and then start executing that against the records that are in your CRM. We go back to setup here under the general settings. Here's the game scope. I mentioned that earlier when I converted that lead uh, that you can earn badges and trophies and set up competitions and things like that. So here's a, a lead speedster trophy, for example. So leads converted, um, you convert X number of leads within one week, and you get points for those and things like that. And whoever has the most leads or most points wins the trophy. So it's kind of healthy competition amongst users within your CRM here. Uh, it makes it a little bit more fun. You know, who, who can close out the most potentials? Who can convert the most leads? Who's you know making the most phone calls? You know, things like that. And if that's not something you want to take advantage of, this is also where you can easily turn off game scope as well. Another brand new feature within the uh, general settings here is email insights. If you turn on email insights, then any of the emails that are sent directly out of Zoho CRM are going to be tracked. And you're going to be able to view things like opens and clicks, uh, be able to see that status within the filters on the, the custom views that we were looking at earlier, be able to see analytics for certain email templates that you have and template performance and, and comparison of different versions of the same templates. And there's also an email analytics report as well. So a lot of really helpful things that, that will help you make better decisions as you're working with your, your clients, your prospects, and the contacts that you have or leads that you have within your Zoho CRM here. Let's take a little bit closer look at what this looks like. I'm actually going to go into uh, the templates area here. We'll go into mail templates. We'll take a look at one of our templates that we have here, and we'll see how that's been performing. Oops, I'm going to leave that on email templates. Uh, let me go down here, and there is this template here. If I click on this little graph off to the right, I can actually go in and look at uh, how well this particular email template's been performing. So how many were sent, how many tracked, delivered, open, unopened, clicked, you know, things like that. So I can actually start to get insights then into the email templates that I'm sending, how well they're working, things like that. Uh, you can filter that by date, so you can filter that by version of the template. If I go into this tabular view here as well, I can actually see the individual versions of that uh, particular email template, uh, see who most recently edited it, see how that's performing relative to the previous version, uh, see some comments about what was actually changed from one version to the next, different things like that. So a uh, pretty handy little tool here. Um, and, and it's kind of interesting, not something that a lot of people thought, hey, I, I really need that in my CRM, but something that Zoho proactively put in there that, that we're really finding helpful here. Also under the setup, there's the marketplace, which is a new area that Zoho is promoting uh, certain integrations that they're creating. Uh, let me click on that. And you can actually see uh, under the installed 
uh, applications. I've actually installed the GoToMeeting uh, item from the marketplace here, and I've got that configured within our Zoho CRM. But you can also go to all extensions here, and you'll actually see a list here now of all the different extensions Zoho is putting out there. The extensions themselves are generally free, as you see if I hover over these, the, to integrate these things with Zoho CRM, there's no cost. Um, these certain services, some of them have free accounts of their own that you can that you can sign up for. Some of them are only paid. Some of them have a combination. Uh, so you'll have to have a, a a subscription to these other services as well, or an account with these other services as well. But the integrations with Zoho that that Zoho is creating are generally free. And so there's a lot of powerful and very popular tools here uh, that can extend the functionality of your CRM and further integrate that with some of the other tools that you're using. And they're constantly adding more to this. It seems like we're getting emails every single week about new extensions that are being built and created and what they're thinking about. And uh, these can be very helpful tools, as I mentioned, moving forward to keep uh, sort of all the different applications you use integrated and kind of centralized around your CRM. So we're getting uh, close to the end of the webinar here. I want to pop back over, see if there's some additional questions here. Um, doesn't look like there are, but certainly feel free to keep posting questions um, if there are any here that you'd uh, like us to get into, any clarification on features or uh, generally any other features that you'd like us to discuss here within the new UI. Um, one of the things I do want to show you here before we, uh, before we wrap up is you do have the ability to also go back to the old UI. Um, so under setup here, I can also go back in and go to the older, or settings, I can also go back in and go to the older version as well. So, you know, every, everyone's Zoho CRM instance is a little bit unique and can, could have been customized in a different way than somebody else's. Uh, in general, we found that uh, the customizations and things like that have no problem transferring over to the new UI. Um, however, it is possible there's something unique to your instance of Zoho CRM that may be problematic in the new UI. So they've made it extremely easy to switch back to the older version here. And obviously, if you do encounter something like that that is problematic in the new UI, go down here and submit feedback to Zoho. Let them know that that's a problem so that they can address that so that you can, you, you can still you know, potentially get over to the new UI and start utilizing that and taking advantage of these, these many really cool features that they've, they've incorporated here. Okay, it looks like we got a question pop up. What about the sandbox feature? Um, sandbox feature is something that uh, is being added. Uh, as of now, it's something that is not available publicly to all users. Um, my understanding of that is that it's going to be available on a request by request basis, um, but that may be tied in with a new sort of level of service that Zoho is uh, rolling out soon called an Ultimate Edition, which is above the uh, CRM Enterprise Edition. So, and, and somebody asked, what is a sandbox? Essentially, a sandbox is an area where you can um, customize the CRM, uh, add new modules, maybe new workflows, things like that, but they don't go live in your regular CRM until you're ready to have them do that. So uh, you, can, you can make customizations for testing purposes and work through some of the kinks and stuff like that before you actually make those go live in your production instance of Zoho CRM. Uh, someone asked a question, does the recipient of an email have to indicate that they've opened an email? Uh, no, they are going to open that email. It's going to down, basically it's going to read from a, an internet URL when they download that email and, or open that email, and that's going to indicate to Zoho that that email was opened. It's a very common thing that takes place in um, mass email marketing. Uh, so I send you an email to promote you know, new features of Zoho. Uh, once that email downloads onto your computer, and I can tell it's been open, the reporting tools that are part of the email software, whether it's Zoho Campaigns or Constant Contact or MailChimp or whatever it is, uh, are going to know that that email is open. Similar to the clicks, when, they, when you have certain URLs within an email, those URLs get encoded in a way for whatever email service you're using. And when somebody clicks on that, then that's how the email marketing service knows that that, that person had clicked on that particular link. 
someone asked about whether or not there was th this would be recorded. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, we're recording this session. Um, we probably won't send that out individually to to you guys, but what we'll do is we'll end up posting that uh, in all likelihood on our own website or our YouTube channel, uh, on our Facebook, things like that, and we can let you know when that's available out there. I don't see any other questions at this time. Uh, I'm certainly happy to stay on for a few more minutes in case there's any other additional questions that anybody wants to bring up. Um, but if you do have to take off here, I, I do appreciate you taking the time here to uh, go through the no new Zoho UI with us. Uh, hopefully you think the, the new features and functionality are as great as we do. Um, we've been using this now in beta for, for quite some time, and it's really, really helped us out. And, and we love the new UI. hope you do, too. And if you have any questions about the new UI or anything else relating to any of the features we talked about today or really anything Zoho, certainly don't hesitate to reach out and uh, let us know how we can help you get more out of, out of your Zoho uh, implementation. All right, a couple more questions coming in here. What is the advantage of third-party mail program over campaign? Uh, it, you know, every email marketing program out there has kind of some unique features, functionality. Some people have some, you know, built-in knowledge because they've been using one for for a while. Um, so every program is a little bit unique, and so it depends on your needs, what, what program is going to work best for you. And Zoho obviously has Zoho campaigns, which you can utilize uh, um, for, for mass email marketing. You can also do the templates within Zoho CRM, as we were just looking at here. And then you, it's also possible to integrate Zoho with other third-party tools as well. So if something else works better for you uh, than maybe Zoho campaigns, uh, we can look at integrating Zoho with that for you. Another question is, do we get any more fields in the business card at the top of the contact record? I don't believe so, but let me go there and um, we'll just take a quick peek here and see if uh, see if we do indeed. Uh, so let me go over here, customize business card. That's interesting. It's not showing the fields that I have there. Uh, no, but it's still five fields. So uh, maybe a little hiccup in the new UI there with what it's showing there, but it's still the five fields that you had previously. And again, I'll stay on for a couple more minutes in case there's any additional questions. Feel free to post those to the chat, and we'll address as many as we can here in the next few minutes. Again, thank you, everyone, that uh, could attend today. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules. And as I mentioned earlier, we look forward to uh, helping you get the most out of your Zoho CRM implementation. It looks like the flow of questions is uh, coming to a stop here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap up the webinar. Again, thank you everyone who could attend today. We really appreciate it. And we'll let you know once this gets posted as well so you can go back and review any aspects of it. Uh, thanks again. Have a great afternoon.